Good afternoon, everyone. Just wanted to give you a uh, brief update on the storm and what we're dealing with uh, in the aftermath of Sandy uh, in our recovery and restoration phase. Uh, Yonkers continues to have about uh, a little bit over 21,000 people who are without electric. Uh, again, this is a, uh, a very large undertaking that must be dealt with. There are 429 trees down our main roads for the most part are clear and our, our top priority today has been to make sure that we remove the trees that are clear that are in the roadway. Um, our biggest problem has been uh, removing trees that have power lines on them and uh, we are attempting to work with Con Ed. I will tell you that I think Con Ed has been somewhat slow in their, at least in their attempt to uh, get together with us and identify what trees have power lines attached to it that are energized. And we have 14 crews that are ready and available and are working around the clock clearing trees. But we cannot clear those trees until Conet identifies for us if those are live wires. And so uh, I put in a call to the president of Con Ed and we're still waiting for his return phone call. Uh, but that's something that uh, uh, we're, we're dealing with at the moment and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see some relief there very, very soon. But Con Ed is moving just a tad bit too slow for mm -hmm. my liking on, on identifying uh, where, where we can actually help ourselves. And uh, so we're working with them on that. Um, you know, it's important to remember, though, to our residents, when you look at the news and you look and you see places like Breezy Point or Queens or New Jersey, that uh, we were very fortunate as a city uh, in, in, in Hurricane Sandy. Uh, so we're going to have to be patient and we're going to get through this. Um, at this point, the worst for us is over, uh, but we are dealing with the fact that we don't have electric and that some of our streets are still... Uh, still need to be cleared. So, and some of our homes still have trees on them. Um, but uh, again, just remember that there are individuals very close to us um, who have it a heck of a lot worse than we do. So, uh, try to be patient. Uh, your your city workers are working around the clock to try and, and, and mitigate this and get the streets open and the power on. Uh, the, shel the shelters are still open. The PAL is open. There are 29 people there as a result of what took place on 10 Mooney Place last night where uh, uh, there was uh, uh, the power. Somebody, I think some of the owners, they tried to restore the power themselves. Uh, that didn't go over too well. So that building is now uh, closed, and those individuals are uh, in, our, in, the, uh, in the shelter. Uh, the schools, uh, it's good the superintendent is here. Uh, obviously, we're trying to make sure that we provide for the safety uh, of our of our residents, especially our student our student population. Uh, and we still have uh, at least ten schools that are um, without power, so schools will remain closed tomorrow. Um, uh, the Yonkers Race has graciously accepted uh, our invitation for them to be, to uh, be a staging place for dry ice and. Residents can expect to go there between 3.30 and 6 p.m. if they want to uh, have dry ice for their refrigerators. Um, <clears throat> there are safety issues that are associated with dry ice, so I hope that, uh, that individuals read the documents that, con that, uh, that will be made available to them just to make sure that they don't get uh, injured. Uh, Halloween, as you know, is today uh, for anyone who's willing to, to uh, celebrate the tradition. We have asked that uh, working with the school system, work with our PTAs, work with some of our, our, of our homeowner groups, we've asked that the tradition be moved to Saturday. Uh, many, uh, if not all, have uh, had here in Yonkers have said they're going to do that. Uh, for those who feel that they need to do it, just do it close to home and remember that uh, there are places in our city where there are no traffic lights and still dangerous conditions. Uh, and obviously, uh, exercise common sense. Price gouging. You know, the last, uh, uh, the last big storm, we had people who were spiking up the gas. When individuals are going shopping, picking up gas, if they see price gouging taking place, I just ask that they call, uh, that they call the mayor's helpline and, and report that to the Consumer Protection Bureau. Uh, let people know if anybody is price gouging. That would help us out quite a bit. 
Uh, last year, one particular price gouger uh, was fined ten thousand dollars for ripping off uh, our residents with the gas price. Uh, with that, I'd like to ask the incident commander, Tom Meyer, Commissioner Meyer, to uh, say a few words. Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as the mayor said, first let me touch on dry ice. Um, I'm not an expert on it, but it should be handled with gloves. It's not an item for our children to be playing with. Uh, if you're going to keep it in a, uh, a cooler, um, should have it out of the reach of young children. Uh, it is okay to put inside your refrigerator. Uh, because your refrigerator is not any kind of lock box it's sealed really tight if the uh, uh, carbon dioxide builds up it, it'll push the refrigerator door open and let that um, uh, those gases out um, it should be handled with caution it is dangerous um, it is extremely cold I think our uh, Building and Housing Commissioner said something like minus 160 degrees, so you can burn your skin when handling it barehanded. Uh, if it comes in in packages, I don't know how it's being delivered to um, through Con Ed to the uh, Raceway parking lot. Uh, if it comes packaged, leave it in the package. Don't try to subdivide it on your own because it can be dangerous. It does produce carbon dioxide, uh, so make sure that you're. Uh, you don't use it in a very confined space. Don't put it in a cool wood and then stick it in some really airtight closet. Uh, put it in your refrigerator to help keep your, your products co uh, cold. We are going to be in the recovery phase, unfortunately, for a while. As the mayor said, and, and um, uh, he, he's the mayor and, and I'm only the, uh, the incident commander. I could be a little more brutal with Con Edison. Uh, they've, they've only given us a few teams. We need more teams down here. It's going to take a little while to clear up all the downed wires. Uh, if you're currently out of power, I need you to do two things. Call the Con Ed hotline and report it. Um, in, in our damage assessment, we're seeing a lot of wires down. Don't necessarily think that the 21,000 uh, residents might be accurate. We've seen some neighborhoods where the Con Ed um, interactive map is showing one number and we think more of the neighborhood may be out so if you haven't reported that your uh, power is out go ahead and report it that will also help Con Ed in their prioritization of uh, restoring power um, the other thing you need to do is uh, prepare to hold off for uh, several more days now if that means uh, going to a, a relative's home and spending a few nights there um, you're not going to get any hotels Hotels and motels are booked in the immediate uh, region for the con mo mainly for the Con Ed crews, the additional crews that they brought in. So if you have an alternate place to stay, go ahead and stay there. We do have the PAL Center as a shelter, um, and um, you could stay there. And if we get enough requests, we can open up additional shelters. Uh, the mayor also briefly talked, uh, and I know the, the fire commissioner will, will probably reiterate this. Um, but it's important enough to, for all of us to talk about it. If you're going to hook up power to your house, get an electrician. Get a licensed electrician, otherwise you're going to cause more problems than you're going to solve. Uh, it, electricity is dangerous, needs to be done properly, and uh, if you don't do it properly, you're just going to get a visit from some of Commissioner Sweeney's guys with the fire hoses to put out the fire, and you're going to move it to our shelter anyway. So use some common sense. Um, the mayor said the other day, uh, you know, if it looks wrong, it probably is. That should be the rule. We do have uh, almost a dozen DPW crews out and parks crews out that are removing trees. We are limited to removing trees that are not touching any wires or not entangled with live wires. Um, that's what we are limited to doing. As soon as Con Ed tells us the wires are dead and they remove the wires, because even if the wires seem dead, somebody puts a generator on their home, that back feeds the system, that wire becomes potential hazard to our crews. So we're working as safely and as diligently and as quickly as we possibly can to remove all the down trees, clear the debris, and uh, get the city of Yonkers back to normal. 
Westchester County has uh, been very cooperative. Uh, we are talking with them right now to hold the material recovery facility, um, the one that's located uh, off the throughway in Yonkers, open for both Saturday and Sunday so that our crews can continue to remove the debris and have somewhere to bring it. Um, we are working uh, with the Board of Education to uh, help restore their, their flooded basement, pump it out. Uh, they're working on re restoring some power there so that uh, we can get closer to uh, accomplishing our next goal of opening up, or the, the superintendent's goals of opening up the school soon, which he'll cover. Uh, we have, um, just so people can understand the enormity of this, we have over 733 calls about trees that have been down. Uh, we've opened up 60 roads. Uh, we've completed 139 other down tree jobs. And uh, we're, we're sitting on uh, the, the remainder of them waiting for the Con Ed crews to uh, declare it safe for us to work. Um, with that, I, unless anybody has any questions, um, I'll turn it back over to Mayor Spano. Before we do questions, let me just get the superintendent. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, through the storm, the district itself, the 39 buildings were fortunate that we did not sustain serious damage. Unfortunately, as was said by the commissioner, Meyer, and the mayor, the problem is electricity and getting our schools powered up. Presently, we have 10 buildings affecting over 6,800 students that are not powered up and is causing us to again not have school for the fourth day in a row. In addition, we transport over 14,000 students by yellow bus. The yellow buses are not able to maneuver and follow through uh, on the routes that they have because of the blocked roads. And again, an issue that we're working with with our city crews who seem to be on top of it, but our Con Ed crews uh, are, do not seem to be at full force. The serious damage that did occur and was alluded to by Commissioner Meyer was at the Board of Education. We sustained over $2 million worth of damage. The entire basement was flooded, which included our communication system. So our phone systems and our computer systems are down at this point in time. Hopefully we'll have them restored by this evening with the assistance of the mayor and the city crews and private contractors and the Board of Education will be operational tomorrow. And it's our hope, it's our hope that we can get our 26,000 plus students back in school as early as Friday, but that's to be seen. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Superintendent. Uh, let me, Commissioner Sweeney. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the fire department's perspective, uh, the call volume is still higher than normal, but has been uh, reducing, going down over the past few days. We do not have any more calls on hold, as we had yesterday, due to the extremely high volume. We are responding in a timely uh, fashion to any calls we do receive. But just to reiterate what's been said here many times before, the wires down, please treat all wires down as live wires. They may be cable wires, they may be electrical wires. For, the, for those uh, inexperienced, it's, diff it's difficult to tell the difference. Uh, and as Commissioner Meyer mentioned before, even if it is dead at one time, if the system is backfed through the uh, network there, it could pose a hazard to anybody walking by. So please be vigilant out there. Please heed the mayor's warning about the children and uh, 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 celebrating Halloween on Saturday during the daylight hours, which is much safer, and the children are supervised, and it will be much safer going forward. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mayor. As the Mayor mentioned, we, we have made progress on clearing some of the roadways, but road conditions remain difficult. We still have trees down, wires down, and traffic lights out at over 25 locations throughout the city. So again, we're asking the, the public to please avoid any unnecessary travel on area roadways. If you do come up to a road closure or a barricade, please don't try to drive around it. It could be a very dangerous condition. Again, please use caution, caution if you're traveling on the roadways. We do have additional personnel working, and in particular, we have extra patrols working in areas where there is no power. Uh, but we want to remind the public to please verify the identity of any emergency or service workers who request access to your property. They should have photo identification or wearing a, wearing a company uniform or logo. So please verify that. And if you have any questions or you feel something is suspicious, contact us at 377-7900. That's our non-emergency number, and we will come out and provide assistance to you. 
Again, we have dangerous conditions. We still have wires down, as we mentioned, and the mayor has signed an executive order of a mandatory curfew that's in effect tonight from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. tomorrow morning for anyone under the age of 18 years. Uh, so it's really trying to keep the children off the street because of the conditions that we're facing as a result of the storm. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I, again, I want to thank the, some of the community leaders uh, who have actually come forward or support in our effort to, uh, to have Halloween tradition on Saturday. And that's, uh, that's very good. And, and like I said, the uh, Board of Education has been a real superstar with us in that effort as well. And, uh, but I'd like to, before we close out, ask our, just announce the entire city council is here, our council president, also uh, Shelly Mayer, our assemblywoman. Everyone has been here working with us, working within their own communities uh, here in the city of Yonkers and, and being the eyes and ears and, and very, very uh, helpful in, in the overall effort. It sounds like you have a target or at least a hope for when the schools are going to open Friday. Do you have any kind of target hope for when you, we might see power back to most of Yonkers? I think what's going to happen is this. Um, we have to get the, the uh, trees off the power lines. Um, but we can't do that until Con Ed is here in the city uh, telling us what, sh uh, shutting off the power that's going to those power lines. Obviously, we don't want to, you know, toast our, our employees. So uh, <laughs> we, uh, that's where my frustration lies um, with Con Ed in that effort. They claim that they have four, two to four uh, trucks in the city, it's not even close enough. And that's something that we're working on right now. Um, but provided that we can get them here, we have enough of our own resources to be able to get those trees moved pretty rapidly uh, off, off the streets and allow them to put their buckets up and repair the power lines. So uh, my guess is that we are at least going, uh, be prepared to go into early next week um, hopefully it'll be earlier than that, but that uh, I think that some of our residents should be prepared. Uh, there are 800,000 uh, homes without electricity in the Con Ed area alone. So uh, they have brought uh, uh, people from as far in as, as Florida. Uh, several thousand workers, power line workers, are coming into town. They're starting tonight, coming into our region. And, uh, and that'll that'll help us. But we are, you know, again, what the commissioner said, report it anyway. Make sure that it's being reported because we get a runoff of how many people that we believe are without power. We kind of think that number is probably higher than 21,000, and uh, and that's why it needs to be reported. Uh, aside from my frustration with Con Ed, I will tell you this: uh, we have this emergency operation going on here. Uh, everyone is working. Everyone is committed. Uh, we have a, a workforce that is second to numb. Our, our uniform services, police, fire, the, M the EMS, the, uh, uh, certainly the Teamsters and the Parks employees, uh, DPW employees, everyone has really raised their game up and they are meeting the task. Uh, we can, we'll, we'll continue to uh, clean the city and, and get us moving forward. So, thank you. Gracias, señor alcalde, para hacerle un resumen de lo que estamos haciendo aquí. Este, primeramente, quiero decirle que nosotros estamos muy contentos con el trabajo que Con Edison está haciendo con relación a la electricidad. Eh, y le queremos recomendar a ustedes que, por favor, manténganse aislados de cualquier de esos cables que están en las calles que han sido eh, derrotados por los árboles. Así que manténganse en sus casas, manténganse lo más cercano posible y lo más lejos de esos cables que todavía algunos de ellos contienen electricidad. Y esa es la razón por la que estamos muy disgustados que Con Edison no ha hecho el esfuerzo que debe hacer para eh, a tratar de resolver el problema que tenemos aquí en la ciudad de Yonkers. También es, estuvieron refiriéndose acerca del hielo eh, eh, seco. El hielo seco se va a estar distribuyendo en el Yonkers Raceway, si pueden pasar por allá. El hielo seco es muy peligroso. Este, deben usar guantes para tratar de eh, trabajar con ese hielo y ponerlos en las neveras, en los refrigeradores, así para no tener un contacto directo porque es muy peligroso y pueden tener quemaduras en las manos y en el cuerpo porque eh, la temperatura es tan alta y muy fuerte. También queremos recomendarle, como dijo el comisionado de, 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 del departamento de bomberos, nuevamente los cables que están allá afuera son muy peligrosos. Y el, 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 el comisionado de la policía también refería a que hay un curfew. Un curfew significa que no podemos estar en la calle por mucho tiempo, especialmente en las horas tardías, porque 
con relación a los cables que están en las calles, eh, pueden los niños tener un problema. Así que el Halloween vamos a celebrarlo el sábado, como indicó el alcalde, para así tener una, una ciudad más tranquila y no tener tantos problemas que pueden incurrir entre los niños si tocan alguno de esos cables. También se refería el Departamento de, de, de Parque y Recreación de que tienen que tener mucho cuidado aquellas personas que creen que porque no tienen electricidad en su casa, pueden salir y hacer y, y tratar de sacar una línea de otro lugar para tener electricidad. No hagan eso, el Departamento de Bomberos va a estar cuidadosamente chequeando a esas personas, va a ser una violación para ustedes eh, y van a estar siguiéndolo con mucho cuidado. Así que, por favor, traten de no hacer eso, que es muy peligroso, porque no tengan electricidad en su casa. Así que si van a tener, hacer eso, tienen que tener personal que lo pueda hacer y sepa hacerlo, porque es muy peligroso. So, así que, por favor, tengan mucho cuidado con eso. Recuérdense que el Trick or Treat, como le llamamos nosotros, esa celebración la vamos a tratar de hacer de Halloween, lo vamos a tratar de hacer el sábado, con todas las organizaciones, hasta hacerlo durante todo el día, durante el, el día que está la luz afuera, para que así los niños, como están los cables todavía eléctricos ahí afuera, eh, no pasen por esos lugares. Y por favor, van a tener barricadas, van a tener en las calles, hay uno, unos, ustedes pueden ver los, los, los tapes que son amarillos que la policía ha puesto alrededor de algunos lugares que ustedes no pueden cruzar. No traten de evitarlo porque eso le va a incurrir en un peligro a ustedes. Así que presten atención, vamos a usar el sentido común para que no tengamos ningún problema allá afuera. Así que ayúdenos a nosotros que nosotros le vamos a estar ayudando a ustedes. Muchas gracias.